This is Rishabh Rajan, and this is a review of the Moog Siren. The Siren is a desktop analog mono synth, very similar to the previously released Minotaur. In fact, as you will realize after watching this video, that it is pretty much identical to the Minotaur, aside from a few updated changes. But this is a new synth, it's not called Minotaur 2.0. It's a new product from the biggest name in the hardware synthesis world. So let's have a look and listen to what this thing does. All right, so now that we've got it out of the packaging, let's have a look at this synth. An all metal design here, very solid, very sturdy, very similar to most Moog products. It's just missing those wooden side cheeks. They do sell those side cheek kits for the Minotaur and I'm sure it'll work on the Siren. Let's take a look at the connectivity here at the back. So there's an eighth inch headphone output. Right next to it, there's a standard quarter inch unbalanced output. It does pick up some noise depending on the other devices you have around the synth. There's an audio input and four CV controller inputs, all on quarter inch. So it might be slightly tricky to integrate it with other Yorak gear. There's a standard five pin MIDI input and also USB connectivity. The 12 volt power adapter is included in the box. All right, so let's hook this up. Plug in the power. Similar to the Moog Mother 32, it does not have a power switch. So as long as it's plugged in, it'll power on. The oscillators take a little while to warm up. So you want to keep it plugged in for a little while before you start using it. It's a monosynth, so it just has that one output. And as I said, it's a unbalanced output. I did notice a little bit of interference, but mainly when I plugged in that USB cable for the MIDI connectivity. But it's always more convenient to set up MIDI USB, so I'm going to stick with that. Okay, now before we actually check out the synth, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Or should I say the bull? So you've probably heard of the Minotaur, it's been around for a while. And if you compare this with the Siren, it looks very similar. In fact, it is identical except for the colorful faceplate and the note range on the Siren is much higher. The Minotaur is more of a bass synth as indicated here, whereas the Siren doesn't say that. It just says analog messenger of joy. All right, now keeping that in mind, let's check out some of the sounds coming out of the Siren. I have a keyboard connected to the Siren. It's off screen. The synth has two oscillators. You have a mix section here and let's just listen to the first one right now. This is the sawtooth. Yes, definitely goes much higher than the Minotaur. Not bad. Let's check out the square shape. After it reaches that highest note, playing any higher notes on the keyboard will just produce that same highest note. Now of course we can have both of them running simultaneously, and either can be a square or a sawtooth. Let's balance the two levels together. Right now they're both set to the square shape, but of course we can mix and match. There's a tuning control for the second oscillator. In the center is the same as the first. It can go down an octave, and it can go all the way up an octave as well. no center indent as you would expect on a true analog synth so you can't really get it spot on in tune but that's the charm isn't it now before we move further there are a bunch of other controls for the oscillator which you can access by holding down a button and twisting some random dial which can get a bit complicated and just too much at least for me i don't want to keep learning a new synth just to access some basic features so to solve this problem, Moog has actually included a software editor. 
and thankfully it's free. This is the software editor. You can access the main panel controls here. It's pretty much identical to the hardware. Any changes you make here will be reflected on the hardware. So for example, if I adjust these controls here, adjust the tuning, you can hear the synth is responding accordingly. And this is fantastic, it solves a lot of workflow issues. But getting back to that initial problem of accessing additional features, if I click on under the hood here, we can access some additional features like this beat frequency, which is essentially a fine-tuned control for oscillator 2. A bit hard to hear this. Let's actually go to the extended page here, so we have access to pretty much all the controls. So now I'll adjust the mix for the two oscillators. And now the beat frequency control. And now the change is a lot more obvious. So you can get it almost perfectly in tune. There is a note sync feature, which essentially ensures that the two oscillators start at the same phase. This is another feature that's not directly available on the hardware front panel. Hard sync too. I'll bring the level down on VCO1, so we just hear VCO2 being hard synced to VCO1. And you can hear that screaming effect we get when I change oscillator 2's pitch. This is a square sync sound. So that's pretty cool. But again, the Minotaur does have all these same functionalities. Back on the hardware, let's switch the waveforms back to Sawtooth. I forgot to mention there's also a fine-tune control, like a global fine-tune control here. And that's not available on the software interface. So there are some things you have to do on the hardware. Anyway, let's move along. Let's check out the filter. It's a standard ladder filter, 24 dB per octave slope. I'm actually going to turn off hard sync as well as note sync here. Let's bring up both the oscillators. Sounds great in the lower register. But also works great on the higher end. Let's go even higher. Alright, I guess we have topped it off. Let's listen to this with some resonance. Nice classic mode sound there. The two detuned oscillators going through a resonant filter. I love the resonance more. Switching back to squares. Setting the resonance at 4. Now this is a true analog filter, so if there's no signal going into the filter, I'll bring down the level on the two oscillators. So now the filter is going to self-oscillate with the resonance at max. Now there's no key tracking control on the front panel, at least not directly, but we can go to the software editor and set up key tracking at 100%. And now if I play a C major scale, it's really high because the cutoff is set really high. The root note is dependent on the cutoff frequency that is set. But that's how you can produce a pure sine wave on this synth. Cool. Let's move down and check out some of the modulation options we have here. So there are two envelopes, one for the filter and one for the amplitude. They're both identical. You notice it's similar to the Mini Moog, where you have one dial that controls both the decay and release. So by default, when you're twisting this dial, you're controlling both the decay and release. But if you look at the panel right now, that's not what's happening. Because there is an alternate mode where you can have them set independently. So when the release switch is on, now I can control the release time independently from the decay time. To go back to that default mode, I'm going to hold down this release button. And then when it blinks a couple of times, we're back to the older mode. So now when I twist the decay dial, it's controlling both the decay and release. This also is identical for the amp ADSR. So just keep in mind, tap and hold that release button to switch between these linked options for the DK and release or unlinked. When you're in the independent mode, when the release switch is on, you're controlling the release time with that dial, and when the release switch is off, you're controlling the DK time. 
Now, oddly, this is a feature that can only be enabled from the hardware and not from the software. At least I haven't seen an option on the software. So it seems like some controls need to be addressed from the hardware exclusively. All right, let's have a listen to how these envelopes work. Let's do the filter one. It tends to be more obvious. This is my envelope modulation amount. You can also have positive and negative. So when it's in the center, it's disabled. Let's hear this now. Let's bring in the two oscillators. Right now we're just hearing the self-oscillation on the filter. How about some of the higher notes? A bit hard to hear filter modulation on higher notes, and that's just because of the nature of these waveforms. You can make the envelope snappy. And that can sound kind of nice on the higher end. And of course, with a little bit of attack, you get that kind of a classic sound. Let's try the same on the amp envelope. Now let's talk about legato playing. Right now legato is on, so when I play in a legato fashion, the envelope does not re-trigger. I'll increase the decay so you can hear that better. So as you can hear, the envelope does not re-trigger. But if I set it to legato off, the envelope is re-triggering when I'm playing legato. If I choose envelope reset, irrespective of how I play, the envelope will always reset. So again, additional controls that you do not have direct access to on the hardware. Now there is an included cheat sheet, so you can choose to memorize those key commands to access some of these hidden features. But let's move along and check out the LFO. So there's just an LFO rate control here and modulation amount for the VCO and the VCF. Let's work with the filter first. I'll disable the envelope modulation. And let's just hear the LFO modulating that cutoff. The LED there helps to indicate when the LFO is restarting. It can go pretty fast into audio rate and you can create some gnarly sounds with this. Cool, so you can do some interesting sound design things with this LFO at audio rate. Now again, there's no control in terms of the LFO shape on the panel, but we can control it from the software editor. In fact, the rate can be set to musical subdivisions, so very easy to integrate this with a DAW, keep things in sync. Let's try some of the other LFO shapes. This is a square. With the ramp down, you get this nice black type shape. Works good on the lower end. Let's try the reverse sawtooth or ramp up. You also get sample and hold for a random stepped modulation. Let's speed this up a bit. 
I like how we have the option to either work directly on the software editor or just go to the hardware and they both integrate well together. Any changes I make on the hardware will be reflected on the software editor and vice versa. So with the resonance up and the two oscillators level all the way down, we get this classic R2-D2 style random pitch tone. Now we can also choose to use the filter envelope shape as the LFO shape. Now this would be redundant if we do the LFO filter modulation because we already have that direct control with the envelope. But we don't have one for the oscillator. So I'm going to increase the VCO modulation over here. So now that envelope shape through the LFO is modulating the pitch. So we can get these kind of sounds. Now one good use for this, which we can access from the software editor, is to set it to VCO2 only. So now only VCO2 is going to get pitch modulated. The first one will not. This will be more useful when we're doing classic hard sync tones. So I'll bring the level down on VCO1. And now we can hear the pitch modulation affecting VCO2 in hard sync mode, which produces those squelchy tones. Let's try it in sawtooth mode. Alright, so that's basically it. There is this glide control here, very simple, just turn it on and now you can get glide. I'll disable the pitch modulation with the LFO here. Adjust glide time and now transitioning from one note to another you hear that gliding effect. There's some glide options on the software editor. There's this equal rate option, so depending on how far the two notes are you get more of a gliding effect. Then in equal time, it doesn't matter how far the two notes are, you always get that same time. There's also this exponential mode, which is similar to what was on the original Moog Taurus synth. There's also a legato option, so the glide only works when we play legato. So you can hear if I play disconnected, no gliding effect. But if I play legato, we get the glide effect. So yes, that's essentially it. A pretty simple basic synth. But again, it's coming from Moog, it does sound fantastic. Now the real question is, if you have one of these, do you really need the siren? Probably not, considering the price. And most of the time people are getting these Moog synths or analog synths mainly because of the fat bottom end, not so much to play those high screechy notes. But if you don't have either of these synths, maybe getting the siren might be a better idea because it is newer and kind of looks more colorful if you're into that. And also it has that higher frequency range. But personally for me, irrespective of if you have the Minotaur or not, this is a very basic synth to be released in 2019, especially considering what other manufacturers are doing these days. I feel Moog really hit it out of the park with the uh, Mother 32 when it was released, but with the Siren at the same price point, this is just not comparable. Anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts on this new synth. What do you think about it? That's it for me. This is Rishabh Rajan for Ask Audio signing off, and I'll see you in the next one.